Wasn't that, uh, listen, I don't know about you, but we had a September to remember. Listen, I don't know any other place I would have been last month from the preaching to the worship to our sickle cell day, to wearing purple to Bishop's birthday. The tailgate was the bomb. And of course, those Omegas came through. But oh my goodness, what a September to remember. We're still basking in the ambiance. We still have a fragrance from September to remember. Welcome to Midweek Manor. Did y'all like that countdown? Oh, it brought, brought back so many good memories. Lord have mercy, September to remember. I don't know if we'll be able to top that next year. But you know what? God always does things greater and every round goes higher and higher. So I can't wait to see what he has in store for us next year. Listen, you all know what we need you all to do. Tag somebody, text somebody, tell somebody that the Bethel experience is on and popping. Yes, we are not on the scene, we're on the screen. And I pray that you have carved out this time, this discipleship hour to hear from God. Tell your neighbors, tell your family, tell your friends, write it in the sky, <laughs> send them a text, call them on the phone, landline or cell, and let them know that the Bethel experience, Midweek Manor, is on tonight. Yes, I see you all. Great. I mean, listen, we enjoyed the entire month from Pastor Marcus, the Bible says, Cosby, to Pastor Reginald Sharp, and oh my Lord, Reverend Shalandria Taylor, and then Pastor John Terrace Tate took us to glory that Sunday. We're so blessed to have vessels like those come to us and give a powerful proclamation. We're in revival, you all. And so the Lord has really been moving. Bishop preached off, I mean, the horns off of Billy Goat. He preached a fit on us this past Sunday. He couldn't even get past his first point. The glory showed up. So we are continuing September to remember with an unforgettable October. And so we're so excited and delighted. Did y'all tag somebody and check somebody and tell somebody that we're on tonight? I am not Bishop McKissick. Let me give that announcement. <laughs> he is on the Chitlin circuit this week. He was in Baltimore, Maryland last night with Pastor Dante Hickman at the Southern Community Church. Oh my goodness, I watched that also too. What a blessed word. The snakes. That's all I'm going to say. The snakes. You have to go back and watch it. And then tonight, he's with Pastor Marcus Cosby in Houston, Texas tonight and th for their Wednesday in the Word. And then on Friday, he's going on over to Columbus, Ohio with Bishop Timothy Clark for the Berean Fellowship Conference. We're so excited and delighted that our pastor, our bishop, is being invited because they feel he has a word for the people. So we're going to continue to pray for him and lift him up, that he fulfills his assignment, that the anointing rests on him and he comes back stronger than ever before. I see you all are on here. Make sure you share this live with your followers, your friends, your family, your neighbor, and everybody. I do want to make actually one announcement, but I, it's a two-part announcement. This Saturday, you all see that this Saturday, yes, Women of Purpose will be in the building. We have come back inside. We have come back on site, and we will be on in the building this Saturday, October 8th at 10 a.m. Now, I know it's not the first Saturday, but we wanted some time in between from last month because we met late. We did not want to turn back around and meet again. And plus we had another assignment we needed to complete by this Saturday, our 21 days. So we will be in the building this Saturday at 10 a.m. You all please come out and share with us fellowship with the women of the Bethel Church. But also we have an amazing opportunity to host the Baptist MD Anderson Cancer Center is bringing their buddy bus to the Bethel Church on Saturday, November 5th. This will be in partnership with the Fight Club. The Women of Purpose will have our monthly meeting next month. And I'm only mentioning this portion right now because they need you to register prior to. They need a certain amount of registrants prior to coming on Saturday, November the 5th. So if you could please, you will receive a text message 
this evening, our marketing team is going to send out a text message. Please click on the link to sign up to get your mammogram appointment. If you have not had that, it's very important to get your mammogram. They have a brand new bus, and so the experience happens on the bus. So when you step on that bus, they have a dressing room and everything for you to change in and have your mammogram on the bus. So a few eligibilities. You must be 40 years old to get a mammogram. If you have a history of breast cancer or cancer diagnosis early in your family, then it's the 10-year rule. If you're in your 30s, then you need to go and get a mammogram. And so you cannot be pregnant. You cannot be breastfeeding. And it has to be at least one year since your last mammogram. So ladies, sign up. You will get a link. Sign up for that. And on Saturday, once again, we'll bring you more information. We're going to have a great Saturday, November 5th. It's going to be a great time next month because we're partnering with other ministries to bring you an amazing day. But I needed to share that now because they need you to register now because, of course, they need to make sure that you're eligible and there's a questionnaire to fill out. So ladies, please do that for me, can you? Men, men get breast cancer also. So there will be some information for you should you care to, of course, partake in it. But please, please, please help us spread the word. Sign up, ladies. It's going to be a powerful day on that day. We're going to be doing glucose checks and some other things. It is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. So we're partnering with Fight Club next month to bring you an amazing day. But I wanted to mention that this evening because we need everyone to sign up prior to. Amen? Amen. And then click on the link once you get the link as a text. All right. You all know what we do. Your giving is so important to the life of our ministry. It helps things to run. It helps ministries to continue to be a blessing in the community and to our members. So our giving platforms are there. Of course, Givelify, the Bethel, uh, the Bethel Church. And I always want to say the Bethel Experience. Givelify, the Bethel Church and text to give. You can give on those giving platforms. It is your reasonable service. So bring the tithes and the offerings into the storehouse. So there will be meat, there will be resources that we can continue to do ministry and bless the people in the community and around the world. We can continue to do initiatives like feeding the homeless and giving to hurricane victims and other things that we've done in the past. So we want to continue to be a blessing to our church, to our ministry. Are you a tither? If you're not, then you need to become a tither. Pray about tithing 10%. Listen, God only asks for 10%. You keep the 90. We don't think about that. He only asks for 10%. You keep the 90. And so being a tither is part of your discipleship. I love giving. I love being a tither. And I'm so thankful that the Lord allows me to tithe when I can. I'm business owners. So tithe when I can and to give my offering every week to him. It's what I am supposed to do. And so I'm thankful that I can follow him and be a tither. God loves a cheerful giver and he'll take a tearful one too, but he loves a cheerful giver. And so we are happy and blessed to be tithers and givers unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did I forget anything, anybody? If I did charge it to my head, and not my heart. I am talking to today on this midweek manner, abide in the vine. Oh, when the Lord gave this to me, I got excited about this study on tonight. I got excited about it. Abide in the vine. And, and I pray you receive this word tonight and what the spirit has to say to the church. Turn with me the, to John chapter 15. John chapter, chapter 15. And it's actually right there on the screen for you. See how easy I made it for you? You see how easy I made it for you? But I pray you have your sword with you. Every disciple should have their sword with them on midweek manner. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. And I'm reading from the Amplified Version. I love the Amplified Version. And it says this way. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. 
And every branch that continues to bear fruit, he repeatedly prunes so that it will bear more fruit, even richer and finer fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have given you, the teachings which I have discussed with you. Remain in me and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Lord have mercy. You can do nothing aside from that. That's enough right there. I can close up the book and go home. It's a lot in that pericope right there. For two years now, we've really been upended majorly by the pandemic. Uncertainty of days and desperately seeking normalcy or normalcy, I'm sorry, anxiety of instability. That's what I call it, anxiety of instability. We've had to adjust in ways that are uncomfortable. I have a question for you. How many of you still haven't gotten a groove or wondering when will this new routine be compromised? I know. That's the anxiety of instability. This pandemic has all of us shook. While it should have brought clarity, it heightened our carelessness, our inattentiveness to the things of God. Failing to give sufficient attention to what matters, our discipleship, our discipline, our stewardship, our ethics, our standards. We've allowed society and social media to be our barometer for the indwelling. Our spiritual temperature for living is in the vine. Y'all saying, what is all this talk about the vine? The vine, our character is rooted in the vine. Our behavior is wrapped in the vine. Our habits are shaped in the vine. The first line of chapter 15, Jesus says here, he's the true vine. The true vine. That means he's the authentic one. He's the pure source. So if he's the true vine, then what becomes of us when we aren't connected with the true vine? What happens to us? What happens when we don't abide in the vine? Guess what? We end up serving fake vines. Oh, fake vines, fake, unreal, distorted vines of evil and idleness, of slothfulness and unproductivity, fake vines. You're serving the virtual vine. I was talking to a member yesterday when we were at the day of action down at the church. I'm not going to call any names. And she said, whew, I guess I need to come back to church. I said, why, why haven't you been back to church? She said, just been at home. A lot of you all are serving the fake virtual vine. It's time to come back to church. It's time to come back to church. Y'all won't come to church for nothing, but we'll wear Jesus' name out when something goes down. Uh-huh, talking about you all. Some of you all are serving the procrastination vine. Oh, my Lord, we love waking up at the last minute, getting to work just in the nick of time. But how about this morning or maybe last week? You had a detour. The line was too long at Starbucks and you couldn't find a parking space when you got to work. <laughs> Some of you all are serving the speeding vine. I know. I know. Y'all are probably saying you're talking to me. Am I talking to you all? The speeding vine. You all drive 75 to 80 miles an hour on 95. Who does that? And the speed limit, I believe, in the city is like 45. Why are you all driving so fast? <laughs> and then you all go through the city turning every corner on two wheels. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. I know. I don't mean to match you all with we with you all too early right now, but this is what the word of the Lord said. Serving the procrastination vine, the speeding vine. What is the proclivity to race against God's timing and his direction? So you're flying through the city. You're flying on 95. Oh my goodness. Serving fake vines. Remember, your behavior and habits are tied to the vine. Oh, wait a minute. The phone vine. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble now. The phone vine. We can't do anything without these phones. If we leave them at home, oh my goodness, we turn around and go back and get it, don't we? We don't know anyone's number. We're always scrolling. We can't breathe without these phones. We live by the phone. But how about your phone only works when it's connected to the source? I know you all are saying when I, my phone works. Uh-uh. Your phone only works when it's connected to the source. When you unplug it, it starts powering down. You know why? Because it has limited power. We all have limited power when we're not connected to the source. It powers down and then it dies. Oh, that's so good. Talking about the phone, talking about the vine. We have limited power on our own. When we're disconnected from the vine, we cannot bear fruit. We must stay connected to the source. You've got to abide in the vine. When you abide in the vine, you don't disregard the presence of God. He said, as I also remain in you. He ain't going nowhere because you confess belief and he in him and he is in you. You made him your Lord and your savior. Or so you say you have, but you ignore his presence. You disrespect his spirit by blatantly disconnecting from him to engage in fake vines. I know I'm stepping on some toes tonight. I'm stepping on some toes tonight. I stepped on my own toes doing it. It should convict me first anyway. Jeremiah, you all turn over to, to, to Jeremiah for me. I, like I said, you ought to have your soul with you and be ready to engage and study. This is what we do. We walk through the word. We walk through the Bible when we are in study, a good disciple always has their sword with them. All right. Jeremiah chapter two. Jeremiah chapter two. Let's 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 start at Jeremiah chapter two. Let's start at verse five. And I, I did not um, uh, write this on because I'm going I'm jumping from uh, through this chapter two through uh through this uh script i'm not reading the entire thing so jeremiah chapter two let's start at verse five it says this is what the lord says <laughs> now y'all know god loved the israelites oh they were the chosen people he loved them but they started doing stupid stuff getting off track worshiping wood idol gods and doing crazy things like going to the club, watching church in bed and shopping at Walmart. Well, it's not Walmart anymore. It's Bucky's. Y'all love going to the gas station mark. Bucky's. Shopping at Bucky's. Posting on Facebook. And some of y'all's posts are trash. Well, some of your cousins, not y'all, you your cousins, trash. Getting everybody told using language that's ungodly, speaking subliminally because you're mad at someone, your language is filthy and because you are connected to a fake vine. God love the Israelites, but Lord Jesus, they started doing all kinds of things. So Jeremiah chapter two and verse five says, this is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me? That they strayed so far from me. They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where's the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravings and a land of drought and utter darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. Where is the Lord? I brought you into a fertile land and eat to eat its fruit and rich produce. But you came and defiled my land 
and made my inheritance detestable. The priest did not ask, where's the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. And the leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you again, declares the Lord. And I will bring charges against your children's children's. Go down to verse 13. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plunder? Lions have roared. They have growled at him. They have laid waste his land. His towns are burned and deserted. Go down to verse 19. Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Long ago, you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds and you said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every high hill and every under every spreading tree, you lay down as a prostitute. Verse 21, it, I had planted you like a choice vine. I had planted you, planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me into a corrupt wild vine? How then did you turn against me into corrupt while vine? You only feel shame when you get caught. That's going down to verse 26. <laughs> All how do you how did you get so far from me? If you connected and abiding in the body, how did you? That's because you disregarded his presence. You make him last, he's not the priority. And you're serving fake vines. Can I get a witness? Can I get an amen? You're serving fake vines. The Lord, Jesus was, was talking to his disciples. This was after the Last Supper. And he was finishing his earthly ministry. So he was teaching his disciples. He was pouring into his disciples. Telling them what they needed to do after he's gone. If, if, he's, if they're staying connected with him, they will be all right. If they're staying connected with him, they will be okay. So he's teaching them. He's doing a series of lessons with them, telling them, hey, I, I'm the one and only. I'm your answer. I'm it. I'm the true vine. I am really your source. So you got to stay connected with me. When you're tied to a fake vine, conviction can't even find you. You can't even check yourself. When you're abiding in the vine, you know something is off. I call it my mojo. You know something is off. When you are in the vine, it's like, whoa, some, some, something, hold on. Something isn't right. Let me let me get, gather my thoughts. Let me get myself together. When you're abiding in the vine, your life is jacked up and your relationships are a mess and your prayer life has gone south. When you abide in the vine, your prayers grow. They have meaning. They are in specificity. They are inclusive of certain components. You're, you are not in the vine when your prayers don't match your, pay, pray, your pace. You are not in the vine when your prayers don't match your pace. I knew somebody was going to be like, oh my goodness. This is what the word of the Lord said. Your prayers intensify when you abide in the vine. So Jesus is telling them to remain in him. Last supper, he knows his earthly ministry is, is, is ending. It's almost like this is the last call. He's trying to tell them and show them and admonish them. So let, let's talk about what does it mean when we talk about abiding? What does it mean to abide? Abiding, longing to invest in something that will sustain me. Uh-huh, when well, we're talking about abiding. I have, 
have a yearning to remain and what will last. Isaiah says the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will last forever. I need something that will outlast me. Abiding means to stay in, to continue in. And it's like your marriage. It's like your job. I have to abide and I have to remain in and stay in, continue in, abiding, enduring. Abiding in my time and my talent and in my treasure. I have to manage what God has given me and what my mental stability um, and my mental capacity to endure. And a motive to be steadfast in my assignment in the abiding. I'll have to invest in what will sustain me. And let's talk about the vine dress. I know you all said, look, looked at that and it says, I am the true vine and God is the vine dresser. That means he's the gardener. You all, if, if you all have gardens, I don't know how many of you all do, you have to cultivate and nurture your garden. He is the gardener. He cultivates and he nurtures, but he trains and he mentors. So he's training. God is training and mentoring Jesus. And Jesus is pouring into us. We are the branches. He is the vine. And so we stay connected to him. So abiding the vine dresser is God. God is the vine. He's dressing. He's training Jesus. And Jesus is our vine. And then prune. These are like vocabulary words. And then pruning. Prune means to clean. Trimming. For good use. If you're cleaning something, if you're clean, but you know how you all get men, you all know how you go to the barbershop and get your hair cut. But guess what happens after they cut your hair? They tape you up. They want to get you clean to get those hairs that are just hanging out there. And ladies too, when we go get our hair did, get our hair did, guess what? They lay down the baby hair. Y'all in this baby hair. <laughs> Y'all know how we get, they lay down the baby hair. They lay down the baby hair. So they're cleaning, they're trimming, they're pruning you for good use. Great word. Great word. Thank you, Father, for your word. So how do we abide in the vine? I know you're asking, how do we abide in the vine? Well, five things. I've got to shoulder up my witness. I've got to shoulder up my witness. What do I believe? What do I believe? Abiding in the vine is good ground. It's return investment. I'm putting my trust in Jesus. I've got to shoulder up my witness. I've got to make sure that my witness is intact. What do I believe? What do you believe? Shoulder up your witness. What you believe, you'll receive. I confess and I attest that Jesus is Lord. So I've got to shoulder up my witness. Number two, I must submit to his will. How can I bear up? He's going to take care of you because he said in his word, I prune what's, what's good. I prune what's good, submitting to his will. He's going to clean you up. And he said it in his word. You are already clean because of the word that I've spoken to you. If you stick with me, I'm going to make you look good. If you stick with me, I'm going to make you look good. I've got to submit to his will. First one, I've got to shoulder up my witness. I've got to, I must submit to his will. And then I have to share his word. How can I be a benefit? You all remember that phrase that said got milk? Well, I got a phrase for you. Got fruit? That's what he's depending on. How can we be fruitful in what we're giving through our character? Through our commitment? through our integrity, 
Are you sharing the word of God? Are you bearing fruit through your character? Are you bringing souls to Christ? I have to share his word. That's what abiding in the vine is. I got to share his word. When was the last time you witnessed to someone? When was the last time you brought somebody to Christ? That's major. Because I know when was the last time and it's been a minute. That's not a good look. So I've got to shoulder up my witness. I must submit to his will. I have to share his word. Number four, I will sacrifice my wastefulness. And I know you all are saying, what does she mean by that? What can I break? What habits and routines aren't building me up? We do some things all the time that are not building us up, that are not good for us. But because we are used to doing it, oh, this is working for me. This is what we do. What's causing you misery that you need to let go of? That's not getting you closer to Christ. What will I behold? I'm sorry, y'all. I will sacrifice my wastefulness. What will I behold? I will surrender my useless consumption. You've got to surrender your useless consumption. I'm not keeping my eye on my junk. I'm keeping my eye on Jesus. I will sacrifice my wastefulness. What will I behold? Surrender your useless consumption. What are you consuming? I, I like playing games a lot. Puzzles, um, the games on the app that I have. Virtual bowling, connect four, those kind of things, puzzles, word search. And before I know it, I'm an hour, two hours in because I'm playing games. Useless consumption. What will I sacrifice? What will I change up and get rid of? That's a lot to think about. I was will I will sacrifice my wastefulness because I'm wasting time that I could be spending with Jesus or doing what he wants me to do, what he's asked me to do. All right. So how can I abide in the vine? The first thing was I've got to shoulder up my witness. I must submit to his will. I have to share his word. I will sacrifice my wastefulness. And then I will stifle my woefulness. I will stifle my woefulness. What can I break? What happens to routines aren't building me up? What's causing me misery that I need to let go of? What are we doing, y'all? What are we doing? I'm not losing anything. I'm, we're gaining everything because I'm already clean. He's told us that. I'm already clean. In verse three, God said, you're clean because of the word that I have spoken in you. I'm the breath of life. I'm the breath of life. In the previous chapter, he actually sets us up in, in chapter 14. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. <laughs> he already told, he said, let not your hearts be troubled. And then in verse 15, he talks about the true vine he is, the gifted he is for us and how we should stay connected. So first he tells us to let not our hearts be troubled. And then he tells us, hey, I'm here. I'm the true vine. If you stay connected to me, you're going to be all right. But stop serving those fake vines. Stop serving those vines that do nothing for you. The procrastination vine, the speeding vine, the shopping vine, the virtual vine. Because you can't come back to church. You go everywhere else. And it's not about these masks. You go where you want to go. The church should not be the one place that you're that you are staying away from and you freely go everywhere else. But when you're in the vine, those things don't make a difference. We don't like going through process to get to see progress. We want to see the progress right now because we are the self-centered, self-absorbed saint. We have to have everything right now. It has to be immediate. We don't want to wait. But the true vine takes his time because we are, we are the finished work. And he said, abide in me as I abide in you. God, Jesus is in us. God is in us. But we disregard his spirit doing what we want to do. We disregard him. 
doing what we want to do. Abide in the vine, everybody. Abide in the vine. You cannot bear fruit. You cannot be fruitful if you are not abiding in him, if you are not connected to him. And so abide in me as I abide in you. What is in you? What is in you? An abiding appetite. Say, everybody say an abiding appetite. A hunger for the vine offering, a thirst for God. If you're investing, you've got to be hungry for it. If you're in uh, an abiding, I have an appetite for God. I have an appetite for his word. I have an appetite to make him proud. I have an appetite to do what's pleasing to him. I have an appetite to serve him. I have an appetite to glorify him because I need more of him. I'm thirsty for him. An abiding appetite is hunger for the hungry for the vine offering. So what's in you? An abiding appetite. What's in you? An abiding belief. My belief is hope for vine results. He told me in Jeremiah, he has plans for me. So I have an abiding belief. That's what's in me. Not only an abiding appetite, but an abiding belief. There's also abiding courage. I have heroism for the vine. I have no fear. I'm not afraid to trust him in the face of adversity. I have abiding courage because I'm connected to the vine. I also have abiding determination. Abiding determination gives me helps in vine strength. I don't have the weight of unnecessary things trying to keep me disconnected. That's that's major right there. I don't have the weight of unnecessary things trying to keep me connected. An abiding determination. But I have abiding endurance. Tell your neighbor, I have abiding endurance. An abiding endurance that heeds vine steadfastness. When you remain, you endure. Say, I have staying power. Tell somebody, I have staying power. I have staying power. An abiding endurance. And then I have abiding faith. My, my faith hearkens to vine necessity. It is a necessity. I can't go without it. I need it. It's essential to my being. I have a faith that my investment will pay off. <laughs> I don't know about you all, but that's good news to me. I have an investment that my that my faith that my investment will pay off. So, what's in you? Ask yourself, what's in me? An, an abiding appetite. An abiding belief, abiding courage, and an abiding faith. Abiding determination, abiding endurance, and abiding faith. Amen. Adia, yeah, do it for the vine. You all remember this? Do it for the vine. I ain't going to do it. Do it for the vine. Your lives, our lives depend on it. Abiding in the vine. Jesus wants you to abide in him because he's in us. And he's wondering, what are we doing? As he asked in Jeremiah, when did you answer? What did what went wrong? Why did they stray so far from him? What happened? He's calling the church to come back to him. We have lost our way. We have strayed so far from him and we're not abiding in the vine. We're looking at all these other vines that think it's going to get us where we need to be. And we're overlooking the true vine. I am the living water. You should never thirst again. Oh, I am the true vine. So you need to abide in him. The vine dresser, it flows down. God is training him. He's pruning Jesus and Jesus is the true vine. God is the gardener. 
He's cultivating, he's nurturing him and he's dressing Jesus. He's training him. And Jesus is our vine. We are the branches and we cannot be fruitful if we are disconnected from him. Amen. You've got to have an abiding faith. You have to have an abiding appetite, abiding belief, abiding courage. That's in you. Abiding determination. I don't want to disappoint him. Abiding endurance and abiding faith. This is the word of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm encouraged. And I didn't make a, I did not make a, I did not make a graphic for this, but I don't know about you, but I want to know more about this vine. I want to be connected with him. If you're listening to me tonight, if you're on midweek manner, someone invited you on here and you do not know Jesus, the word of the Lord said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart, you shall be saved. There's no initiation. There's no wait period. Immediately, you shall be saved if you made the prayer of salvation. I want you to text TBC decision. Listen to my voice. Put 54244 in the two column and text TBC decision. One word, no spaces. Text TBC decision to 54244 if you made that prayer confession. If you do not have a church home and you're looking for one and you stopped by the Bethel Church tonight, look no further. We would love to be your church family. We would love to be your pastors. Guess what you do? Text TBC decision to 54244. A link will come up. Please fill out the information. You will receive a call 10 minutes after we get off of here. <laughs> I'm putting a timestamp on it. 10 minutes after we get off here, you will get a phone call from our team. Please answer your phone so they can continue your journey in the Lord, your journey in the church and give you your next steps as to what you do after you become a part of this awesome and amazing ministry, a ministry on the move for Christ. Text TBC decision to 54244. We want to meet you. We want to see you. And we want to be your family. We want to love on you. We want to help you to grow. We want to help you deal with the issues of life by being connected to the vine. Amen. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this time of sharing. We thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for all that you're doing in, through, and with us, Father God. We love you, Lord God. We love you and adore your name, O oh God. There is no other name that men can be saved than by the name of Jesus. So we're going to abide in the vine. We have an abiding faith, abiding truth, abiding appetite, and abiding determination to do your will and your way, Father God. Bless your people, Lord God who are connected to you, who are connected to this branch of Zion, Lord God. Bless our pastor, Lord God, as he travels. Thank you, Lord God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God, and we give you the glory, Lord God, because you are so worthy, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for this time of sharing. We thank you, Father God, for this midweek manner, our hour of discipleship, of study, and of growth, Lord God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. Our strength and our redeemer, Father God. Let this word fall on good ground, Lord God. Let it be pleasing to you, Lord God. We praise your name, Lord God, and we glorify you in all that we do, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this evening, Lord God. Um, let us have a fruitful week, Lord God, and bring us back together on Sunday without the loss of one so we can continue to give your name to praise, Lord God, and we can continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. We love you, Lord, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. You all have a great night. Be safe. It is layering up season, a layer up season. So make sure you have a jacket in the car. Take it with you wherever you go. Cool evenings, cool mornings, but the days get warmer. But we want to make sure everybody's healthy. You have what you need as you go through your day. Be safe. May the blessings of the Lord go with you. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I look forward to seeing you all ladies on Saturday. And then everybody on Sunday morning in the house. Amen. Amen.